said, my spiritual master said, here's the word, you are a fool. He said, you are not qualified to study Vedanta philosophy, therefore you should must always chant the holy name of Krishna. This is the essence of all mantras. Simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, one can attain freedom from material existence. Indeed, simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one will be able to see the lotus feet of the Lord. Verse number 73. Verse 74. Nama vina kali kale nahi adadam sarva mantra sarva nam e shastra man. In this age of Kali, there is no religious principle other than chanting of the holy name, which is the essence of all Vedic hymns. This is the third word of all scriptures. Verse 75. E bhakta e sloka sikai lamore, kattikara e sloka kariya vijare. After describing the potency of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, my spiritual master taught me another verse, Inviting me to always keep it within my throat. Hare Nama, 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 Hare For spiritual progress in this age of Kali, there is no alternative, there is no alternative, there is no alternative to the holy name, the holy name, the holy name of the Lord. 
purport by Srila Prabhupada. For progress in spiritual life, the Shastras recommend meditation in Satya Yuga, sacrifice for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu in Treta Yuga, and gorgeous worship of the Lord in the temple in Dwapur Yuga. But in the age of Kali, one can achieve spiritual progress only by chanting the holy name of the Lord. This is confirmed in various scriptures. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many references to this fact in the 12th canto, verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 51, and he said, Kale doshani virajan nasti eko mahagunaha kirtana deva kushnasya mukta sangam param vajet. In the age of Kali, there are many faults, for people are subjected to many miserable conditions. Yet, in this age, there is one great benediction. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahal Mantra, one can be free from all material contamination and thus be elevated to the spiritual world. In the Narada, Pancharatra also praises the Hare Krishna Mahal Mantra as follows, Trayo Vidya Sadhaga, Trayo Vega Saangani, Chandamsi Vidvada Sudaha, Sarvam astaksaram tatstam yachanam api vanmayam sarva vedanta sarata samsara navataranaha. The essence of all Vedic knowledge, comprehending the three kinds of Vedic activity, Kamakanda, Gyanakanda, and Vasakanda, the Chandras or Vedic hymns, the process for satisfaction of the demigods, is included in the eighth syllable Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. This is the reality of all Vedanta. The chanting of the holy name is the only means to cross the ocean of mission. Similarly, the Kali Santara Upanishad states, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. These 16 names composed of 32 syllables are the only means to counteract the evil effects of Kali Yuga. In all the Vedas, it is seen that to cross the ocean of nations, there is no alternative to chanting of the holy name. Similarly, Sri Madhvacharya, while commenting on the Mundaka Upanishad, has quoted the following verse from Narayan Samhita. Dvaparayar Janayar Vishnu Panchara tries to Kaivalam, Kalo to Nama Matrena, Pujite Bhagavan Harihi. In Dwarpa Yuga, one could satisfy Krishna or Vishnu only by worshipping him gorgeously according to the Panchara Triki system. But in the age of Kali, one can satisfy and worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead simply by chanting the holy name. In the Bhakti Sandarbha text 284, Sri Jiva Goswami strongly emphasizes, strongly emphasizes the chanting of the holy name of the Lord as follows. And there's a long, long verse, which I'm not going to try to chant half a page of Sanskrit. Srila Jiva Goswami states that the substance of all the Vedic mantras is the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Every mantra begins with the preface, Nama Om and eventually addresses by name the Supreme Personality of God. But the Supreme Will of the Lord, by the Supreme Will of the Lord, there is a specific potency in each and every mantra chanted by the great sages like Narada Muni and other rishis. Chanting the holy name of the Lord immediately renovates the transcendental, yeah, renovates the transcendental relationship of the living being with the Supreme Lord. The word renovates is used to renew it or bring it back. To chant the holy name of the Lord, one need not depend upon other paraphernalia. One can immediately get all the desired results of linking with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is therefore be questioned why there is necessary for initiation or further spiritual activities and devotional service for one who engages in chanting of the holy name of the Lord. The answer is that although it is correct that one who fully engages in chanting the holy name need not depend upon the process of initiation, 
Generally, a devotee is addicted to many abominable material habits due to material contamination from his previous life. In order to get quick relief from these contaminations, it is required that one engage in the worship of the Lord in the temple. The worship of the deity in the temple is essential to reduce one's restlessness due to the contamination of conditional life. Thus, Narada and his Pancharatriki Vidhi and many other great sages have sometimes stressed that since every conditioned soul has a bodily conception of life aimed at sense gratification, to restrict the sense enjoyment, the rules and regulations for worship of the deity in the temple are essential. Srila Rupa Goswami has described that the holy name of the Lord can be chanted by liberated souls, but almost all the souls we have, but almost all the souls we have to initiate are conditioned. It is advised that one chant the holy name of the Lord without offenses and according to the regulative principles, yet due to their past bad habits, they violate these rules and regulations. Thus, there is the regulative principle for worship of the deity, and these are also simultaneously essential. End of purple. Om Akyanti Midandasya Kina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Om Nilitanya Natas My Sri Guru Veda Maha Sri Chaitanya Nauri Sam Stapitam in Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadanti Swam Padantika Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adveta Gadahar Sri Vasari Gora Bhattarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Rama, Hare Hare So Prabhupada says if you sit down and try to just chant Hare Krishna, you'll think about sense gratification. Our minds are too restless. That is, a, that is the quality of the age, of this age, color. This age is considered manda sumanda matiyo manya bhaga upadya daha. This is from the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. When uh, the sages of Nami Suranya had asked Sutta Goswami some questions, and he said, what are the qualities of, what, of the people of the age of Kali? And then he quoted this verse. Kala sabda yuge jasmin manda sumanda matiyo mangya bhagya upadrataha. In this age people are quarrelsome, lazy, unlucky, misguided, and always disturbed. Here we go. <laughs> this is the age. So, I don't want to make you feel bad. <laughs> That's the way we are in this age. You know, at the slightest change in situation, we become a disturbed and annoyed. And it's just the age is very a difficult age. And therefore, people are very disqualified spiritually. So, but therefore, Lord Chaitanya has come in this age to make it easy according to the level of qualification. In the age of Satya Yuga, the process for self-realization was Astanga Yoga, or the Eightfold Mystic Process, Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pratyahara, Pranayama, Dhyana, Dharani, and Samadhi. And the eight steps are called the eight angas of Bhakti, or uh, yoga and yama means things to do niyama means things you avoid asana we all know that hatha yoga uh, meditation or uh, purification of one's existence drilling the respiration through various forms of uh, um, what they call pranayama you know doing breathing exercises along with the asanas and then fixing the mind on the tip of the nose and 
keeping one pointed attention and meditating on the Lord within the heart. And as that increases, it goes through different stages and finally reaches the stage of samadhi. Okay, you got it. Go for it. <laughs> so that was in the age of the Satya Yuga. And people were qualified. They lived very long. The average lifespan was between 60,000 and 100,000 years. So you can think, how can a material body live that long? Well, it can't. It's just that we're in this age of Kali. It's like how to understand, you know, what it's like in heaven when you're here. You have to be there to really understand what it's like. So our perception maybe is a little bit beyond the level of our existence, but that's all. So we can't understand the quality of people in the age of, of Satya Yuga, of Valmiki Muni. He meditated, meditated for 60,000 years, and then later wrote the Ramayana. So 60,000 years of meditation, wow. And we, we, if we can do 60 minutes, that would take me. So you can see the difference of the people, you know, we're just trying to make some comparison just to show how qualified people were in that age. And most people were on a, the highest spiritual platform. Many people were upon the Hansons. They had the highest spiritual understanding. The environment was perfect. It rained only according to the season and only according to the time when rain was needed. Um, everything was provided by nature. Nature worked completely under the control of the Lord. So there was no anomalies. There was no difficulties. Everything was working nicely. And there few people were happy and people were spiritually inclined. So therefore, in that age, although people knew about the Hare Krishna Mahal Mantra, they didn't practice it as a means for self-realization. Because it was too easy. It just was too easy. So this Astanga meditation program was the means for self-realization. In that age, and that was taught by Kapila Dev. He mentions that in the, the Srimad Bhagavatam. The, uh, Kapila Dev was the incarnation of the age of Satya, uh, Satya Yuga. So that's considered the golden age. And if you study a little bit more about it, you can find Everything was ideal spiritually and materially. Prabhupada said 99.9% .9 of the population was Krishna conscious. But being in the material world, things change. So as time went on, things started to go down. Then we entered into the next age. The age of Satya Yuga was one million. 200 and some thousand years, more than a billion years for that age. So it was a long age. Um, and then gradually after that one million so many years, things changed and people became a little less qualified. The four principles of Vedic literature, uh, four principles of religion were completely followed. One of the four principles of religion, um, mercifulness, truthfulness, cleanliness and austerity. These are the four principles of religion. In, in the next age, Treta Yuga, one of the principles was lost. And the means for self-realization changed into what is called Vedic sacrifices. Doing homas, pujas, lighting the fires, chanting the mantras, invoking and giving auspicious substances such as gold, jewels, grains, wonderful foodstuffs, fruits, flowers, and offering these things in sacrifice to the Lord. And the mantras were chanted by perfect brahmanas who could chant the mantras so perfectly that there was no discretion or no, no slightest change from the actual chanting of the mantra. We were speaking last night how we, when we chant certain mantras, we, we say them different. And how Prabhupada was a little, a little strong in many cases about pronouncing things correctly. Because if you make a little pronunciation 
mistake in chanting the Bhagavad Mantra, the whole sacrifice is wrong. The whole thing is gone. You have to start it all over again. Or sometimes it's not, it's not even done on the same day. They have to just get all new paraphernalia, everything. So the Brahmins were so expert that the mantras were chanted perfectly. And the fire was considered to be the tongue of the Lord, and the offering into the fire was the, was the sacrifice. And in that age, uh, these costly homeless, very costly, people were quite wealthy by nature's arrangement, and everyone could perform these sacrifices. And that was the means for self realization in that age. We still do these sacrifices, but there are so many discrepancies in our prayer procedure. And we don't actually do them according to the entire Vedic, what we say, understanding of how to do them. We get a little short version of what is supposed to be done. But still, we do them for, sac for initiations, for marriages. Or uh, what else? Sometimes we do them to bring about auspiciousness and performance of some yagyas or something, opening temples like that. So no one can do those in this age either. The brahmins are not qualified to chant the mantras in this age, and the paraphernalia needed for the sacrifice is not available. And so that was straight to you. And that went on for, yeah, that was over one million years also. 432,000 times three is yeah, one million two hundred and something. Yeah, Satya Yuga was one million seven hundred and sixty something years. Trekta Yuga was one million two hundred, three hundred years. And then we came to the next stage. Another religious principle was lost. And there was only two left. And now we came to the age of Dwarpa Yuga, where people were very proud of whatever they had. They were qualified in so many ways. You read about the Mahabharata, a lot of that speaks about the age of Dwarpa Yuga, how there was so much pride in chivalry, pride in one's bodily you know, strength or beauty, education, there was a lot of pride that in that age. And people had those qualities. And the means for self-realization changed. And deity worship was explained or given the Pancharatriki system by Sri Narada Muni. Now, Prabhupada said, what I have given you in deity worship here is about 20% of the deity worship process. That's in our Radha Krishna temperance with elaborate worship. We're getting 20%. He says you can't perform the actual Pancharatriki system. It's too difficult. And there's no, there's no the qualifications are not there. So, people were qualified at that age, and there was elaborate, costly deity worship. Where, whew, gorgeous temples. Some of them still exist in this age. Um, and people had a lot of wealth, still wealth was there, and they would worship the deity with so much wealth like that. And people were chanting the mantras, priests were also qualified, but that lasted 864,000 years. And then gradually, another irreligious principle, religious principle was lost, and now when at the end of the age of the Dwarpa Yuga, Krishna came in the form of Bhagavan Sri Krishna. He incarnated as Krishna and appeared in the land of Vrindavan. And at the end of, after 125 years, Krishna disappeared from the age and the planet, and then came Kali Yuga. 400, uh, what the was it? About one, about 4,500 years into the age of Kali, another incarnation came, and that was Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. To teach the means for self-realization in this age. When people are, what we say, unqualified. In Satya Yuga, people lived up to 100,000 years. In Trekta Yuga, 10,000 years. 
in Dwapara Yuga, 1,000 years. It's like we read in the Bible. Those of you who have some knowledge of biblical study know that Noah, Noah, Noah was in Dwapara Yuga. People were living, Noah lived something like 760 years. Many of his family members also lived. Many of his associates, they lived 500 years, 700 years, 600 years. It's all mentioned in the Bible how long they lived. So that was the Apura Yuga. People lived up to 1,000 years. But now, Kali Yuga, and therefore, Manda Sumanda Matayo. Life is shorter, intelligence is less, memory is less, bodily strength is less, mercy is less, everything is less. Haribo. <laughs> Welcome to reality. <laughs> so, therefore, the Lord is merciful. One of the qualities of the Lord is that He's extremely merciful. And therefore, according to the level of consciousness or the abilities of the age, a particular type of means for self-realization is given. Although we practice deity worship in this age, it's not the means for self-realization. The means for self-realization in this age is chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So that's easy, yeah? It's easy. We don't have to have a lot of wealth like they did in previous ages. You don't have to chant perfect mantras. You don't have to have, you know, birth in what we say, a good family. None of these things are required. There's no rules, no regulations, no requirements. Just chant Hare Krishna. But then again, it mentions here, Prabhupada answers a question, poses a question and answers a question. Then why is initiation important? Why is deity worship important? Because in this age, people are disturbed. Everyone is constantly disturbed about something. And quarrel is easy. If you just say something, even sometimes you look at somebody wrong. <laughs> Spread their ready to fight. Your country people are a little bit more civilized, but you go to America, ooh, God. It's like I was riding in the car with Vlado, and we were trying to get here. We were a little late. So he said, you know, take this other, go in front of all these other cars and just come around like that. You know, just getting ahead of everybody. So he hesitated, but I was persistent, and finally he did it. And he went, ahead of this big line. So we just went there and we were in the line and we went first. Now if you would have did that in America, you just have to sit low on your sheet. Somebody wanna put a shotgun. <laughs> it's like there was a thing on television called Road Rage where people were, you know, shooting each other from cars because people didn't like the other way people were driving. You know? It was actually a newscast. People were so disturbed. And it's like that. There was actually one story where one time, one Indian man who came to America, he didn't know much about American culture, and he was sitting, he was driving, and he, he, you know, the man in front of him was stopped at the red light, and he was behind him in the car. And so the man didn't go when the light changed green. So he started beeping his horn, beep, 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 you know, like you do in India. The horn is like the ultimate essential principle of cars. And so the man got out, turned around, brought a gun and shot him. He killed him right on the spot because he was disturbed because he was beeping his horn at him. So, you know, it's like that in some places that people are so living on the edge. I remember, oh, I remember one of us, we were driving here at one time and we cut off somebody. Oh, the man had so many mantras to tell us, you know. <laughs> we we'll repeat those mantras. But, you know, it's like that, you know, people are just like ready to fight, or ready to curse, or ready to get any slightest little difficulty. 
So it's a very disturbed age. Very disturbed age. Jai Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Jai Shri Radha Kunjabi Hari Ji Ki Our dedicated Pujari Ki So, it's like that. People are so, so disturbed in this age. So, the Lord knows that. This is the quality of the And the age is getting worse. Prabhupada said, don't stay around in Kali Yuga. Because you read from the different Puranas describe what is the future of this age. People will be eating their own children. And uh, you know, life will, the age will become shorter and all the bad qualities will increase more and more and all good qualities will gradually leave. So it's a very difficult age. And therefore, people are so unqualified spiritually. Just like we see, I know I'm experiencing many of our temples, we ask people to sit down and chant Hare Krishna, they can't do it. Their minds are so disturbed, so restless, that we give them some service to do, so they can burn up some of that passionate nature and become a little bit, what we say, quiet in mind. Meditation is hard. To sit down and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, 16 rounds, try it. <laughs> it's hard, right? But for the age of, you know, in other ages, that's just like, you know, come on, get real, that's easy. <laughs> but this is the age of Kali. It is a difficult age. So therefore, to accompany or to support the quality of our chanting, Deity worship is given. Prabhupada said, Deity worship helps to overcome the restlessness of the mind and focuses the mind upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So therefore, Prabhupada opened so many temples. Prabhupada had four missions. He's completed three of them. First was to spread the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and Sankirtan movement around the world. Two was to open Temples everywhere of Radha and Krishna and other deities of Gornitai and Sri Ram Jagannath. Three was the process of giving Diksha initiation and elevating people to the standard of human beings, as Prabhupada says. To follow these four regulative principles is the beginning of human life. Below that is considered something less than human. That's what the scriptures say. No meat eating, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling. These things destroy the f or support the four religious principles, which are austerity, cleanliness, um, um, truthfulness, and what's the other one? Austerity, cleanliness, truthfulness, and mercifulness. Meat eating destroys mercy. Illicit sex destroys cleanliness, austerity, intoxication destroys austerity, and gambling is destroyed by lying, cheating, frivolousness, and truthfulness is destroyed by gambling, trying to get something for nothing. So, therefore, in order to practice spiritual life, Prabhupada well, made it really easy. Follow these four principles and chant 16 rounds. But we can't do that. <laughs> That's hard. So he gave us deity worship, so many other things to occupy our mind. Why? So we can somehow or other purify our consciousness. And when we sit down and chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, we can focus on the sound of Krishna's name. So that's the reason why we do all these other things. We like them. Deity worship is nice. It's one of the nine processes of devotional service. And it's a means for well, perfecting one's life. But it's not the Yuga Dharma. It's not the Yuga Dharma. If you, just like one time I went to Germany. I was in Germany. And the, the, uh, the temple president was very concerned. He called me into his room. He said, I have a problem. I said, what is that? He says, we have a wonderful pujari. She is dedicated to the service of puja. She loves to do puja. She 
dresses the Didi so nicely. She puts on her heart in She even gives some of her own. And, you know, Lakshmi to help support Didi worship. But she won't chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so what, what am I going to do? I said, well, she says that, the, that it says in the Shastras that any one of the nine processes are, we read that yesterday in the verse, right? Are, what we say, uh, alone can give one self-realization. But then Prabhupada qualifies after he says that. But in this age, one must accompany all the eight with the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. So I said, that's very nice how much dedication he has to deity worship. It's very hard to find a pajari like that these days. But at the same time, he should encourage her in one way or another to chant. Otherwise, she won't be able to last in her deity worship because the Lord won't allow it. He'll push her off the altar because she's not purifying her consciousness through the chanting. So both of them go together. And so, and about two weeks later, he came and said she left her post. It was sad because, you know, all she had to do was chant Hare Krishna. But therefore, um, uh, these other processes are supporting the Yuga Dharma to chant the holy names of the Lord. And when we, and the process is to remember Krishna 24 hours a day. That's what it means to be Krishna conscious. To keep the mind connected to the process of somehow either deity worship or reading the books, somehow or other connect yourself to with Krishna 24 hours a day. And when, when one purifies their consciousness, then one can chant 24 hours a day, like Shiva Haridas Thakur. We can't jump to that stage. That is actually the goal, to always remember Krishna by always chanting his holy names. When Prabhupada was asked, are you always chanting Hare Krishna? You know, the, the devotees in America, they asked Prabhupada everything. It was like, they really put Prabhupada through everything. Asked him every questions, challenged everything he said. But it was good because that brought out all the possible answers that people could use as excuses. And Prabhupada answered every question. So when he was asked, are you always chanting Hare Krishna? He told the person, you come over here and you put your ear on my back. So the person did and he could hear the mantra going on inside of Prabhupada. His heart was always chanting. Even though his lips were not moving, inside the chanting was going on. Like Just like this Kirtan Mela, if you stay with the whole thing for a weekend, you know, when you go to sleep at night, you're chanting Hare Krishna. When you wake up, you're chanting Hare Krishna. And then, you know, it goes on for some days, and then we go back to normal. And <laughs> we go down again. But that's the idea. Just like this morning, I, I woke up chanting, I woke up, I just woke up all of a sudden chanting, I go dear Vasi Hiram, Am Dasanati Now I forgot it because I'm thinking of Hare Krishna. <laughs> but I was singing that all morning. Could stop singing, and I think I got to. I have to chant Hare Krishna now. <laughs> I was singing it the whole morning when I woke up, from the time I got out of bed to the time I got to my beads. So you know, because Dasarat Sutta Prabhu was here, and he was chanting that mantra with such feeling and such devotion that it just, when it enters your mind, you just pick it up, you know. If somebody chants the Hare Krishna Maha mantra, I'm sure some of you are, you know, woke up this morning or chanting last night in your sleep. So that's what we want to be. That's what we want. We want that intensity of the remembrance of Krishna 24 hours a day, where it's automatic. It's not that we have to force it. It becomes automatic when we stay in contact with the, with the Holy Name as much as possible. Because the heart, to chant Hare Krishna is normal. To glorify the Lord is normal. That's the normal business or natural business of the soul. So the soul is always doing that, but the mind gets in the way. 
So we have to bring the mind in connection with the process, the activities of the soul. So in this age, although we do so many other things and they're necessary, it's all about purifying our, purifying our consciousness so we can chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And Prabhupada says in the, that in order to you know, chant, we have to follow the process. It's important. You can't curtail it. So I got a letter from someone the other day. Maharaj, I have my own spiritual path. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Where's it going? <laughs> it's kind of funny. You get on any path, you know, you could create your own path. And what happens? You fall off the side of the road. Because you don't know where your path leads. The authorized path is Mahajana Yena Katastapanta. And one must follow in the path the Acharyas who have given us the process. Chant Hare Krishna, worship the Lord and the deity. It's not that you have to be a Pajari for deity worship, but you come to the temple, you take darshan at the deity. You see Krishna in his transcendental form, you offer your love, prayers to Krishna, your desire to serve the Lord, that's bhakti. That purifies your consciousness. It connects you with Krishna. And then when you actually sit down to chant, it becomes easier. It's not easy, but it becomes easier. So deity worship really helps to, to help us purify our consciousness. And then when we actually do that, we can see the same deity everywhere. That deity is in the heart of every living entity. So when we chant the Hare Krishna Mahat Mantra, we can, ex we can actually see that Krishna is in the heart of all living beings. We read the books, we talk about the philosophy, we hear about the glories of the Lord's wonderful pastimes, in Vrindavan, Abhadwi, Jagannath Puri, so many wonderful pastimes, Rameshwar. It all, it's all about connecting us up with Krishna. But the goal is ultimately, the, the goal is to always chant Hare Krishna 24 hours a day. That's the goal. So keep that goal in mind. And practice these other processes, but practice chanting Hare Krishna as much as you can. Prabhupada said, don't leave the mind vacant, but you know, the mind likes to think about things, and complain about things, and dwell upon things, and this is like, just fill your mind with the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra all day. And I guarantee you, you'll get everything else done. It's not, a, if I think of Krishna, how will I be able to do anything else? question, right? But actually Krishna carries out just like that little super, little simple thing this morning, you know. I was chanting the Holy Name and I had to go back into the, the restroom, the bathroom. So the floor is all wet. And, I, and then I didn't even think about putting my shoes on, but I just started walking over to my shoes. I was thinking, hmm, that's interesting. Why am I getting my shoes? Oh, the floor is wet. That's why. But I didn't think about it. But because I was chanting the holy name, the holy name did it for me. Little thing. But it, it just how the holy name just kind of guides you in whatever way you need. And even in the simple little day-to-day -day things that we do. So if we can remember to chant Hare Krishna, that's why these Weekend programs of kirtan are so essential for boosting us, giving us that electrical, transcendental charge towards the spiritual energy. To keep us fit, that when we practice devotional service throughout the week, we can, you know, remain fixed on remembering Krishna and serving Krishna with enthusiasm. So. Therefore, I mean, the glories of the holy name are as unlimited as Krishna himself because there's no difference between Krishna and his holy name. This section of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, please read it. It's the, when Prabhupada gave us the Chaitanya Charitamrita, he gave us this chapter first 
before the other chapters. Although it's not the first chapter in chronological order, he gave this chapter first. What was the chapter? Chapter 7 of the Adi Lila. That was the first thing he gave us. And then he gave us Adi 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 after that. Because this is all, the whole chapter is the glories of the Holy Name, the glories of Kirtan. Verse after verse after verse after verse. We just read. Actually, the devotees printed a separate book just on this chapter alone. It's called The Five Features of Lord Chaitanya. It's about the Panchatapra and it's about this chapter. So, this chapter was actually given special recognition. I call upon a separate book was, was authored just on this chapter. So if you please take time, it's all about the glories of the Holy Man. Okay, any questions? Comments on anything? Yes, um, Radhika Linda. Uh, just a technical question. Do you maybe know who was this devotee who has put his I heard the story many times, I didn't, but I didn't hear the devotee's name. If I did, I might have forgotten them. I can't remember. Do a little research, a little back, about past times. Yes, uh, Mahatma? Yeah, also, maybe technical question. Uh, it was mentioned in the lecture that if mantra is pronounced not perfectly, it loses its uh, power. So my question is about Maha Mantra. Is, is it also subject to this? But because when we sing in bhajan, we uh, always sing Rama, not Rama. Uh -huh. So my question is, is that All these Italians, Rama. There's a verse in the 17th chapter. Uh, I can give you time. Prabhupada talks about how to chant the Maha Mantra. It's in the verse of the 17th chapter of Adi Lila. He says, pronounce the mantra clearly, avoiding using the upper and lower lips, avoiding the hissing sound. Kush. Kush. Hare Kush. 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 Some people whistle. Kush. And then, ever hear people when they whistle? Hare Krishna? I've seen devotees chant Hare Krishna and they whistle. But that's not the idea. It's not about whistling. So Prabhupada, in different places, and also in his lectures, he also stressed the importance of chanting clearly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Sometimes in kirtan and ecstasy, the ecstasy somehow overshadow our pronunciation. That's all right if it's ecstasy. But if it's not ecstasy, it's something different. But not everyone understands your ecstasy, so try to pronounce it right. Ramo, or what we say. Sometimes we skip. Not so much in kirtan, but in japa we actually I know the all these chants sometimes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. There was one devotee, he did a little experiment, he put a tape recorder by everybody's japa. And he played it back. He said, you want to hear your japa? <laughs> You're shocked when you hear your own <laughs> So, yeah. It's very care we care carefully pronounced. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. If you begin, just like in Prabhupada's Japa take, in teaching Japa, he, he slowly starts, just like we just did. And then as the mantra goes on, he increases faster, 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 faster. So that's how you, you approach the Holy Name. Catch the mind, catch the sound with the mind, and then gradually increase it. 
That's the ideal way of chanting. If you're tired, you can chant a little faster, so you don't, you know, your mind stays connected. But in, in any case, you know, pronunciation is important. Because it helps us to focus our attention. When the mantra is clear, it's easier to, to, to hear the mantra. When it's not so clear, the mind goes other places. Easy. Yes, Yeah. Well, that's why we do it. It has some, it has some merit, it has some value. It's, it's just to purify the atmosphere. But you know, if we could chant purely, we wouldn't need any yagyas. But we can't chant purely. That's why we do yagyas. I'll give you an example. Um, when Prabhupada was about to open the Krishna Balaram temple in uh, Vrindavan, he said, I could have opened that temple simply by doing kirtan. And he established Krishna Balaram in the front, along with Gordon Tai and Radha Shamsun there. But he said, the Brahmins in Vrindavan, they wouldn't accept us as bona fide unless we did yogis. So he did a whole very elaborate costly yoga which was really elaborate. Just to uh, show that our movement is, you know, is following at least that principle of performing yagyas, because that's the tr tr standard. But if we can chant kirtan, kirtan, wherever you place kirtan, that's the highest form of worship. So you don't need any yagyas, you don't need any initiations, you don't need any deity worship, you don't need anything. All you need is the only name for everything. But we can't chant purely. That's the point. So that's why we do all these other things, so we can purify ourselves. So we can eventually come to the state of chanting purely. But we can't even do the yagyas purely. So that's a problem too. So yeah, there's yagyas for initiation, there's yagya for marriages, the yagya for temple openings, there's other yagyas too, so many yagyas. So it helps to purify our consciousness, you know, we're following some certain principles of the Vedas. But we're not on the highest platform, so we have to do all these other things. When you're on the highest platform, you can just channel 24 hours a day. That's the perfect yoga. That's why Prabhupada mentions, in this age of Kali, Yajnaya Sankirtana Praya. It is the yoga of the yoga. In so many purports, I mean so many, when the word yoga comes up, Prabhupada talks about yoga and says, but in this age, Sankirtana Yoga is the recommended yoga. He'll speak about other yagyas and speak about the principle of yagya, and then he'll always end with Chanari Krishna, that's the yagya. But, you know, we do all these other yagyas because we can't chant purely yet. So, that's one of the reasons. And yagis evokes evoke auspiciousness too. There's a certain auspiciousness that comes by doing yagis. And people like that. It's like sometimes when we get married, we have a nice yagya, and the relatives of the children they come, oh your marriage is so nice. Right? They see the marriage, they get all excited, right? You know, you know, it takes about how many hours, seven hours to get married. It takes ten minutes to get divorced, but seven hours. Gotta <laughs> 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 have big arrangements for you know, marriages. And it looks very nice. I mean, we're doing all these different things. And, you know, 
they tie the sari and the dhoti together and so many things. And they have so many colors and yoga yogis and bodhis are chanting mantras. It's just like a real, it's a real performance. And then the parents, wow, boy, you people really know how to get married. <laughs> and the Vedic marriage systems are really colorful, right? Really nice. I remember when I was at Gita Nagri. Maybe you were there. This was in 19, 2000, year 2000, when they had those seven marriages. Uh, it was in the year 2000. Seven marriages. So they called him Chaturatma. You know, he's the, one of the best yoga persons in our movement. And he, he did the whole thing. It was really elaborate. It's true. Seven people getting married. All the relatives came from all over the country. There's about 50 relatives. They just it made them. It made them feel like they're part of something important. You know, you know. And then nowadays, you go. You don't even get married nowadays. Right? You go in front of somebody, you pay what thirty-five dollars, and give you a piece of paper, and you're married. <laughs> Even nowadays, people don't even get married. They just, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll be friends for a while. <laughs> After 10 years, if it works, we'll get married. This is Kali Yuga. It's another one of the symptoms of his anguish. You know? But we do all these nights because in the Vedas, every, what we say, stage in life is done in a very elaborate way. It's like even Nanda Maharaj with Krishna and Vrindavan, they did so many yogis. When Krishna was born, he was a yogi. When Krishna was they gave him a name, he was a yogi. On his first birthday, there was a yogi. There were so many yogis. Yogis like that. And they're important. But ultimately, Sankirtan Yogi is the, is the yogi of all yogis. So oh, Prabhupada gave us all these yogis. They purify the atmosphere. They give auspiciousness also. But what do we do during the yogis? We chant Hare Krishna. That's, right? During the yogis, we also chant the holy names. When we finish the yoga, what do we do? We have kirtan. While the yogis are going on, sometimes the bodhis are chanting in order to support the, the atmosphere, so the yogi will go on nicely. Yogi Any questions? Any more questions? Yes, Prabhu. Put them in, their, in your mind while you're chanting. Actually, he wanted to ask a practical question. If you can say some comment on this. Yeah, I'll give you a quote from the from the Bible town on this one. Let me get up this quote so you can. This is Prabhupada's quote. Another point established in this verse is that meditation should be carried out with the chanting of a mantra. 
chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra is the easiest process for meditation. 